Good morning, folks. Let's start how we started last night's evening news. The best part of having this podium of sorts is seeing how fast we all find answers together. The question I posed yesterday was about the 15% loss of magnetic field compared to the 10% that we've reported the lifetime of this channel. Here are the best findings, starting with ESA's own swarm mission, which you might remember I guessed was the source in yesterday's morning news. Indeed, their 2013 PDF link below has that figure buried deep within. But hold the phone. The British Geological Survey's Geomagnetism Review of 2012 contains that figure as well. Clear as day. But egg on my face further still. Let's go back to early 2011, before even the creation of my channel on YouTube. Given this media site, I'm assuming their data came straight from the Canadian and US governments. It is what it is. I've been wrong for two years, and now I'm feeling red-faced about it. 15% is the mark we will use for the fade in our shield. Now let's yank up that new Earthwind map, and again, big thanks to David Jenkins for the share. I've zoomed in on the North Pole because as Syria, Jerusalem, and Egypt watch 100-year snow records crumble, there's a counterpoint north of Europe, where doubled lows and line are yanking mid-latitude air and injecting it directly into the polar regions. On the leading east edge of the convergence, we see a draw from the latitudes of Espana all the way north, and I'm going to bet that affects the ice recovery in a significant way. Let's come back down south, South America, where the rain isn't stopping along that same general drench and accumulation lines we've had our eyes on. Wouldn't be shocked to see some more flooding or landslides. Things like this infuriate me. At the bottom of the page, they've got more related articles as well. Essentially, this is what our online communities have thought for a while. Sonar and other sound and energetic testing is detrimental to the wildlife. Whales won't feed and will actually flee areas where these tests are performed. Not so proud of my species on this one. Let's kick it to space weather where we haven't seen a gamma burst in nearly two weeks. Got some low-level sea flaring, but nothing major. Nothing indicative of solar maximum for sure. Visual intensity of the Earth-facing group belies the lack of flare danger. See good size, but all negative up north, positive in the middle, the only complexing magnetic stuck between cannibalizing umbral cores, unable to gain power, and turning away from us now. Solar wind metrics are all dropping off. Wake of the space weather kept the KP above zero, but it's at very low levels. We are dead in between coronal openings at the moment. Incomers not represented on ISWA, but the southern group is. Top quake while I slept hit Gibraltar. It's an unusual location in the 5 magnitude range. RSOE alert map has it downgraded to 4.7 and the USGS is ignoring it completely. Canada, Peru, and Vanuatu with minor rumbling. Take a moment to notice all the filaments present on the earth-facing disk. All are eruption threats, but the biggest ones can make significant CMEs. More so than the little ones, obviously, so I've labeled them for reference with 193 angstroms. Got some more shots of the new earth wind map and our star to close. Eyes open. No fear, it's 5.55 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.